What is up guys, Jacob here, and this is going to be a different video from the usual, I probably should have done it earlier, but I had a rough time at work, so please pardon the late video on the matter. Anyway, uh, what I want to try to do is decipher what the heck is going on with the latest YouTube apocalypse, and what does it mean for the YouTube community. As a disclaimer, I'm no lawyer, I'm studying a different subject, I have no credentials in regards to the matter, I will be just stating facts I was able to find, and my personal opinion. So with the introduction out of the way, let's get started. So first we need to know what the heck is Kappa? I said Kappa, not Koopa. Kappa. C-O-P-P-A. Thank you. Stupid editors. Oh wait, I'm editing this. All unfunny jokes aside, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, widely known by the acronym Kappa, is a law effective from 1998 which was passed in a bizarre country called enforced by the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC. In basic terms, it should prevent gathering data on minors, those being individuals 13 or younger. As some of you already know, back in the warm month of September 2019, Google and YouTube had to pay a small fine to the FTC. The fine was a pitiful $170 million. That's a bit for me, or for any other individual, but for such a company? I don't think it made much of a difference on the account, but that's beside the point. You know what's actually funny about it? The operator, aka the company providing the service, has little to no control over how people are using the platform. Heck, there are people discussing very <clears throat> fun anime on the site. However, in order to register on YouTube, to have an account, the user has to be at least 13. That's in compliance with Kappa. You might be asking yourself, how the hell YouTube screwed this up? The answer? Beautifully. Well, they made a big oof, which was pretty much the reason they were fined. They knew about the violations, and they were proud of it. Don't know about you guys, but when I was proud of breaking the rules when I was younger, I didn't make an official statement, I didn't post that on Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media, but I did tell a few pals after a couple beers. Google, in its infinite wisdom, used that fact and knowledge in an official presentation to Mattel and Hasbro. Thanks to that, the FTC had all the ammunition needed to find the company. Everything was settled out of court. YouTube and Google decided to pay the 170 million fine, and the settlement also required them to develop and implement a system identifying children direct content on the platform. So, what is the system the YouTube thought of? Well, first thing that was done, all creators were to advise to use their community tab in YouTube Studio to mark their content as child-friendly. Or not. YouTube strongly advises to do that for the entire channel. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to publish child-friendly videos. You still can do it, but you just need to mark that specific video as for kids. No big deal, right? Kinda sorta. There are a few things people are afraid of when it comes to kids' content on the platform. The most major one being a fine that the FTC can enforce on the creator. If it's just a measly 42,530 bucks, anyone can handle it, right? Of course! Sarcasm aside, that's a big fine. Not to mention other things YouTube will disable on the channel or video marked as child friendly. Those being comments, Info cards, end cards, personalized ads, stories, community tabs, notification bell, and the viewer ability to save the video to a playlist. That's a major blow to the community a creator builds on the platform. By marking content as for kids, one basically cuts himself out from the audience since, well, YouTube will disable any form of communication. Well, guess it's time to dust off that old Facebook account and disable Twitter notifications. People who made YouTube their full-time job are most afraid of the lack of personalized ads. The exact number of how much revenue this type of advertisement provides depends on the creator, but it's speculated to be in the 80% to 90% range of the total revenue of a video. Don't know about you, but I wouldn't take an 80% cut on my paycheck lightly. However, there is more content that is watched by both children and adults or content for the general audience is recognized by the FTC and addressed in the COPPA FAQ E4. Basically, if the creator is an adult and uploads a video that has kids' features, like, let's say, a card game, then 
In accordance to the information of the FTC website, COPPA doesn't apply. This revelation was published by a few lawyer channels during the weekend and is, at this point, common knowledge among creators. When it comes to any possible repercussions to the Yugi Doop community, I have to say I'm standing with the most of the creators. COPPA doesn't apply to us, we're still, for the most part at least, grown men playing video games and talking about card games. There is a lot of fear mongering in regards to this topic, but I hope that this basic level analysis has put some of you, at least, leave your thoughts about the issue in the comments below. Any source used as a part of my research for this has been linked in the description, so you, dear viewer, can check everything for yourself. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time for your regular-ish content. Bye-bye!